Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to read from a novel called The Surrounded by Darcy McNichol. Uh, McNichol was a fascinating guy. He uh, was born on the Flathead Reservation. His mother was Salish. His father was Irish. Um, he became very well educated. He, he actually went to Oxford um, and went on to uh, do a lot of incredible work with the government for Indian uh, affairs, for Native American issues. Um, was pretty highly regarded in that circle. But um, as a young man, he wrote this novel, and it's very obviously uh, based on his own life, um, although it's clearly not autobiographical. Um, it's about a young man who goes back to the reservation. Uh, he's an aspiring musician. And um, it's just an amazing story of um, what it's like, fr from what I've heard from my Native friends, what it's like to go back to the reservation and try to um, come to terms with um, what it means to try to make something of your life off the reservation, uh, the pressures that come with that. Um, to me, it's, um, other than Louise Erdrich, who is my favorite contemporary writer, this is the best Native American novel I've ever read. Um, and I've read, uh, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of Leslie Marmon Silco and Scott Mamaday, but um, this book really blew my mind. So this is the beginning. It was published in, the, I think, in the 20s or something like that. Nin well, okay, 1936. Anyway, here's the first few pages of The Surrounded. And the, the characters, the main character's first name is A-R-C-H-I-L-D-E. I ha I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I'm just going to pronounce it Archild because I think that's probably what he intended. It's sort of a play on words, I think. Archild Leon had been away from his father's ranch for nearly a year, yet when he left the stage road and began the half-mile walk to the house, he did not hurry. When he emerged from behind a clump of thornbush and cottonwood and caught his first glimpse of the cluster of buildings before him, he looked once, and that was all. He avoided the front of the big house where his father would most likely be sitting and made for the dirt-roofed log cabin which occupied lower, gro lower ground down toward the creek. Two dogs, one yellow and one black and white, leaped and howled, but they were the only ones to meet him. He walked past the big house, which was his father's, and went to the cabin, his mother's. There she was, as he knew she would be, sitting in the shade. If she heard him, she did not look up at once. But she was a little deaf and a little blind. Perhaps she had not sensed his approach. He let the heavy suitcase slip from his sweating hand. Then she looked up. A sigh, a sigh escaped her, and a quick smile multiplied the many fine lines in her wrinkled brown face. Here he was, the best of her sons and the youngest. Home again after a year. But would he stay? She had only a faint idea of where he had been. The world out that way was so unlike Sneel and Iman. She had even less of an idea of what he did when he went away. But never mind, here he was again. She smiled quickly, a little at a distance. She did not wish to embarrass him with her attention. So you have come back, she said. Yes, I am here. He turned his suitcase over on its side for a seat. Where have you been this time? To Portland. That's where the stinking water is. She let the word echo in her ears, saying nothing herself, but it had no meaning. If he had said he had been down toward the mouth of the Snapoli, <laughs> this is awful, the Columbia River, she would have known what he meant. But Portland? Her red-rimmed eyes gazed toward the timber which came down to the far bank of the creek. Two boys were splashing in the water down there. You have been gone a long time. 
I had a job. I played my fiddle in a show house. I can always get a job now anytime I go away. She looked at him quickly, taking him in. He wore a blue suit and a white shirt, and his tan shoes were new and polished. So he could go away any time now? He did not have to be fed at home? They paid me this money. Look. She barely glanced at the offered money. It was all strange. She could not make it into a picture. An Indian boy, she thought, belonged with his people. So I just remembered, I said that... Um, McNichols' mother was Salish. Actually, she was Mati. Uh, it was the character in this book, um, the mother in this book that was Salish. So anyway, The Surrounded, Darcy McNichol. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.